Well, they don't call it a comfort zone for no reason. For some, it's a favourite chair that conforms to the contours of our backside. That's my spot. For others, it is found in the sole of a well-worn shoe or the fit of our favourite outfit. In the very essence, in its very essence, moving from one place or state to another involves change. And that often does not come easily. After all, it's said that the only person who likes change is a baby in a wet nappy. And I'm not sure that that's even always true. John Maxwell suggests that people are moved to change when they want enough, when they desire a better outcome, when they receive enough information or support, or when they hurt enough, enough pain or discomfort. What does it take for you to move? Let me pray. Jesus, as we spend some time in your word, as we reflect upon the truths of your word, Holy Spirit, would you speak to us deep to deep? Would you move amongst us? Would you brood over us? May you quicken in us an awareness of the things that you want to say to us today. And may we, in obedience, be quick to respond. May we not drag our feet. May we be people that are prepared to change and move to the impulses um, and the directing and the leading of your love for us. Amen. Habits and routines can become the norm over time. Consider how your life has changed over the last three years. Sometimes change can be forced upon us. Other times we can intentionally want to change and put change in place. While on other occasions there is no intention at all. But then one day we, it's almost as if we, we look around and we see ourselves in a place that we didn't expect to be. And it's very different to what we intended. But an exciting move takes place when we're open to being moved by the Holy Spirit. Rather than seeking security and conforming to routine and comfort, we seek first the kingdom of God and follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit in our lives individually and also as a church. If you have your Bible with you, I invite you to turn to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Being open and responding to the move of the Holy Spirit is not restricted to the theologically trained or to the ordained. It is a call of Jesus for every follower and takes you on an adventure of a lifetime that can leave a legacy for generations to come. Philip, in the book of Acts, is an example to us individually and for us as a church on what it means to be, to be moved by the Holy Spirit. And it, can take, and it takes him to places that he never dreamed of. And it had a positive impact for all eternity. Now, last week we were introduced to Philip, possibly a Hellenized Jew, and in Acts 6, he's described as a person who is well-respected, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, and able to administer, able to manage and look after a major food program that was being developed. Then, following the outbreak of persecution in Jerusalem, which Saul, who would we, we would come to know as Paul, supported, many believers moved away from Jerusalem to avoid the great wave of persecution that was taking place. We read that Philip moves to the city of Samaria, possibly Sebastia, almost halfway between Jerusalem in the south and Nazareth to the north. In Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 8, we read, but the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people uh, uh, there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because he was, uh, they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. 
Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims. And many who had been paralysed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in the city. Now, I imagine that Philip could have thought, okay, this is pretty good. There's, there's ministry happening, it's being blessed, there's being lives changed. I can settle here, continue this ministry and make a real difference in this city. But at short time, after a short time there, the Holy Spirit calls Philip to move. The Holy Spirit calls Philip to move from the masses to the margins. And it seems ridiculous but Philip moves south some 80 kilometres to what appears to be the middle of nowhere, a, de a deserted desert road that runs between Jerusalem to Gaza. So for the next two to three days, Philip travels a seemingly crazy U-turn in life, away from the celebration of people coming to faith in Jesus, back past the persecution in Jerusalem, to a de uh, desert road in the middle of nowhere, all the while urged by the move of the Holy Spirit, but wondering what would he find. Acts chapter 8, 26 to 40. As for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under the Kandake, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over and walk along beside the carriage. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? And he urged Philip to come up into his chariot and sit with him. This passage, the passage of scripture he was reading was this. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water and the eunuch uh, said, Look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptised? And in some texts of, and versions of the New Testament, as it's being transcribed and, and reproduced in the early days, it also has verse 37. You can, Philip answered, if you believe with all your heart. And the eunuch replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself north at the town of Azutus and preached the good news there and in every town along the way until he came to Caesarea. The Holy Spirit moves Philip to go from the masses to the margins, from the many to the one. But not just in the middle of nowhere, but moved by the Holy Spirit to cross over cultural barriers and religious barriers as well. As a follower of Yahweh God, the Ethiopian, um, actually from the area of Sudan, uh, in the northern part of Sudan rather than Ethiopia, um, the, this uh, treasurer would not have been allowed to uh, access the Israelite temple court of men due to his eunuch status. Not unique status, eunuch status. As uh, Deuteronomy 23 verse 1 states, there were cultural and religious barriers that Philip must be prepared to bridge if he was going to move towards this foreigner. 
but because of his willingness to be moved by the Holy Spirit. Philip has already demonstrated that he was ready to be a pioneer in sharing the good news of Jesus. Moved by the Holy Spirit, Philip sees other cultures as God sees them, not as the enemy, not as less than, but to see that God is already at work there in the life of this well-to-do influencer. It was an invitational question. Philip gains the attention of the Ethiopian and is invited to join the nation's treasurer in his chauffeur-driven, biofueled limousine of the day. Over the next few hours of travel, Philip starts with the, where the treasurer is spiritually at and introduces him to Jesus. The treasurer responds to the gospel message and is baptised. But God is not finished with Philip yet. Now, at the coast of, uh, in the area of Gaza, the Holy Spirit moves Philip to continue to pioneer in a cross-cultural gospel message and travel up the coast over the coming weeks and months all the way up to Caesarea. Philip's love for Jesus, his willingness to be moved by the Holy Spirit and his heart for the gospel um, to be shared with others has Philip come uh, up again some 20 years later in the book of Acts. In Acts chapter 21 verses 8 and 9, Philip is still in Caesarea, involved in sharing the good news of Jesus. But this ministry is not just one of his own. His four girls are now growing up and each are known for the gift of prophecy. Philip was moved by the Holy Spirit and as a result pioneered the early growth of Christianity in the regions around Israel, in Samaria, all the way down to the northern part of Sudan and along the west bank all the way up to Caesarea. There he stayed and not only saw the cross-cultural ministry continue, but also a cross-generational ministry take place because of his willingness to be moved by the mission of God. For us today, I believe that Philip encourages us to be like him, moved by the Holy Spirit. It is surprising how quickly we can become comfortable with the way things are. It's what we know, it's what we're familiar with, the sights, the sounds, the day-to-day, the week-to-week rhythms of life. We can lose our sensitivity to the nudge, to the move, to the promptings of the Holy Spirit in our life. We can experience this personally, but we can also experience this as a church. We protect what is out of fear rather than pursuing what could be in faith. This is not about recklessness, but rather a desire for renewal and revitalisation of our relationship with Jesus and the outworking of the gospel in our life and in the lives of those that the Holy Spirit brings us to. We are called to move from a desire to be comfortable out to the margins the first and most important step that we can take is to invite the Holy Spirit to move in us, to move us. When we walk through life with our ears covered and our eyes closed off to the movement of the Holy Spirit around us, it's easy for us to stay in our comfort zones, to miss opportunities, to miss divine appointments that God has for us. We live in what is, rather than what could be. But, but when we pray and when we're prepared to pray, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to be open to the opportunities that you have for me. Forgive me for when I miss those opportunities and help me to recognise them better so that next time I'm prepared and in a position to be able to step out in faith and move with you. That's 
and exciting. That is an adventurous prayer. Philip could have stayed in Jerusalem or where he was comfortable in Samaria. There was joyful ministry happening there. But for the sake of the mission of God, Philip was called to move. For some, it can be, uh, the call can be to move to another part of the world. While for many, the Holy Spirit calls us to move to take our blinkers off. Blinkers of gender, culture, ethnicity or financial status. To be moved by the promptings of the Holy Spirit to talk with someone. It can simply be checking in with them. Being prompted to, by the Holy Spirit to, when the Holy Spirit says, you should have a conversation with that person. Check in with them, see how they're doing. How they're going. Hear what's going on for them and then offering to pray with them, to pray for them. We see this in Philip's move. He was prepared to move to bridge social, cultural, religious, and even economic divides. He engaged with the treasurer where the Ethiopian was at. God was already at work there before Philip even got there. Philip's role was to discover where God was at and then to help to explore and un help the treasurer to understand um, and engage in a gospel conversation. From my experience, when you don't listen first and just tell, it sounds like you're shouting at the person. As a church... We need to be prepared to move to where the Holy Spirit leads us. This may mean that we move from what is comfortable, what makes common sense, to what seems quite contrary and uncomfortable, even unconventional. To move to the margins, to move to new opportunities, to move to build bridges across gender, social, cultural, religious and economic divides for the sake of the mission of God. It is not about watering down the gospel and the centrality of Jesus as God's only saviour for the world. But it is a willingness to see people at where they are at and what God is already doing in their life and being moved by the Holy Spirit to help them to come to know Jesus as their saviour. Like Philip, being moved by the Holy Spirit may take us to unknown places where we haven't been before. But we trust and we step out in faith knowing that God has gone before us. And while there's no guarantee... Being prepared and continuing to be prepared to be moved by the Holy Spirit models to the next generation what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Not just a Christian in name or in tradition, but a Christian living by faith and telling stories about how you saw God at work in your day when you were moved by the Holy Spirit in this way or that. Moved to the margins. Moved across barriers. Moved to conversations of grace and good news. And a willingness to keep on moving. Philip is an, ex an inspiring example of what it means to be moved by the Holy Spirit. It's a call of Jesus for every follower and takes you on an adventure of a lifetime that can leave a legacy for generations to come. What does it take for you to move? Let me pray. Jesus, it is a challenge, it is an encouragement, it is inspirational, but at times it may even be a, rebu a, a rebuke to us of when we want to stay in our comfort zones because they are exactly that. They are comfortable to us, but that they, they betray what the gospel is about. The good news 
of Jesus, you coming and dying on the cross for us. And that the world needs to hear this good news. Lord, help us to be prepared individually, but also as a church family, to continue to move. To move to where you lead us, Jesus. This is your church. We are your people. And help us to continue to respond to the move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. For your glory and for the extension of your kingdom. Amen. So how might we respond today? Well, are you open to being moved by the Holy Spirit? If not, then, hey, I reckon that's a great place to start praying about. But if you are, then pray that prayer. Holy Spirit, would you, would you move in me? Would you help me to be open to the things, the opportunities that you present to me? And when I miss the mark, help me to be more aware of those opportunities so that I can get it right next time. Help me to respond in faith to those promptings that you give. What are the barriers for you to move towards others? Is it fear? Is it your reputation? Is it that you doubt that God's going to be a part of that? Is it about fear of getting it wrong? What are the barriers for you? How might you model being moved by the Holy Spirit to others? And then pray that Northern will continue to be moved by the Holy Spirit to where God wants us to be. There's going to be some music played. For those at home, encourage you to use the chat function. For those in the auditorium, you've got those response cards. I encourage you to use those as you respond to the things that God's saying to you today. As the music's played, use that time and those cards will be collected with the offering during the singing of our final song today. God bless you.